Cardinal. Now it is Brian Johnson, the left fielder, and then Tim Griffin, the designated hitter, do up. Johnson doubling back in the first inning and driving in two runs during that five run explosion. Sprague with two RBIs on the home run. Whitmire drove in one with a single, and then Johnson doubled in two more. And Arizona State has not been close since then. Stanford made it 8 0 before the Sun Devils scored in the fourth. Stanford adding a run at the bottom of the sixth, and here they are on the bottom of the seventh. One out, and nobody on. Linty Ingram, the third Arizona State pitcher, with the breaking ball at 71 miles an hour on that. Jugs gun measurement. We'll try to use that to get an idea as to how hard Spencer is still throwing the ball, too. He has been extremely impressive for Stanford. He's gone all the way. Again, the breaking ball in the 70s. Usually, Rick, what's the differential in speed between the fastball and the, and the breaking ball? It could be as much as 10 miles an hour, somewhere in that area, but the big Thing that you're looking for is just being able to change speeds anyway. I mean, even the fastball, I'll be able to change speeds on it itself. But there you see the fastball, pretty good one at 86 miles an hour. Seeing the jugs gun being used here, Brandon, goes back to 65. Of course, Lewis and Clark threw out the first pitch for that particular series, and they were just <laughs> small boys, but obviously did not have the radar guns only being used on the highway at the time. But back then, it was like it sounds like he's throwing hard. Painted that outside corner for strike three. And that's two strikeouts here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Well, we saw how fast the fastball was, the pitch before 86, but here is outstanding location. Ingram getting the strikeout. And now it's Tim Griffin, the DH. Drove in a run and scored after doubling. That was in the third inning. State. A team that had beaten them five of the six times they played during the regular season. And that's the beauty of the one game and out. You never know. Big moment for that man, Mark Marcus, who approached the United States Olympic team and is moving nearer and nearer to back to back NCAA championships. And his job right now is to not let his ball club take anything for granted at all. He knows on the other side of the field that Arizona State Ball Club has been able to score some runs, and the frustration is just starting to mount even more for Arizona State with their hopes maybe starting to dim here. Right past him. He struck out the side. An impressive inning for Ingram here in the seventh. Knocks him down one, two, three. So they have come to the eighth. And they'll have John Finn leading off. He will be followed by Kevin Higgins and then Steve Willis when we return. Last year, half of our sales were of products that didn't even exist five years ago, like our pacemaker that changes speed to meet demands on the heart. We're Siemens USA, leaders in medical engineering, telecommunications, energy, automation, and electronics with 23 research and development centers coast to coast, helping to build a stronger, more productive America. We are Siemens USA. My recipe for the perfect lunch? Watch this. A flunder fjord dish, the menden fjord. What? The menden fjord. Oh, you can't read the menu. Yeah, the menu. How about a cheeseburger? Oh, yeah, the cheese and burger. And a natural life? Yeah, the beer, but the taste for food and fiber. Uh, for food. A uh, food and fiber. Yeah, for great taste, it's a natural, natural light from Anheuser-Busch. Are you sure you don't speak English? Uh, hey, Dave, foreign gag again, huh? Has he yodeled yet? Oh, <laughs> that's a yoker. <laughs> Nice beard. An electric razor doesn't shave that close. It's not your razor, man. It's your face. Without Electric Shave, your beard just lays there. Electric Shave stands up your beard so it shaves down close, lubricates for comfort. Good tip. Electric Shave for a closer, smoother shave. Savages? Nah. Guys with irritated skin from shaving. Try new Aqua Velva Skin Conditioning Aftershave. Hey, it's creamy. Guys prefer its soothing formula. And fragrance. 
There's something about new Aqua Valva skin conditioning aftershave. Uh, here are some umpires who are not too concerned about the Bach rule. Go to it, Miami Maniac. Oh, the flavor of college baseball. <laughs> Richie Phillips, eat your heart out. <laughs> <laughs> now, those are my kind of umpires. That's great. I tell you, they just won the hearts of every single person in this stadium. Well, the first time I came here in the mid-70s, I caught a spreaker. Now, today, I get boogie and umpires. Can't beat fun at the College oh, World Series in Omaha. Here is John Finn now. Top of the order. This young man has really done a job here this afternoon against the Sun Devils. Up a little high with the breaking ball that time. Then has reached base two of the three times he's batted and struck out. Pitch up high. Two balls and no strikes. Spencer has not walked anyone yet. John throws these days. I don't think they're using a the radar gun on it. <laughs> Measure it in weeks or sundial, but you can't argue with results. You sure can't. Location for Tommy John with that great sinker ball. There's the breaking pitch. So the fastball was at 85, and the breaking ball. 77. Spencer will not be 19 years old until August 7th. Right. Too far inside. His first walk of the game. So the freshman, was he worried about fresh pressure in this game, pitching the title game for Stanford? Well, here's what he had to say. I, I pitched in um, the championship game last year before. I think, um, I guess I, I didn't do real well in the American Legion National Championship game uh, last year. I kind of, I looked to that um, as a chance to kind of, you know, redeem myself. Kind of, um, last year, I, I had a real rough time in the championship game of, of that tournament. Um, so this year I'm looking you know, for a chance to you know, show that I, that I can pitch a big game. He is showing that, but he has fallen behind in the count. One ball and no strikes. Later is second baseman Kevin Higgins. Stanford leading. There's the strike. And Steve Shitrin, the top relief pitcher for Stanford, up and loosening down the left field line. Line to right field. And it falls in for a base hit. Finn moves on to third as Higgins singles. And the first two hitters here in the for Arizona State. They're keeping a close eye on Spencer now. 17 starts that he had during the season. Only four complete games, and we've seen here in the eighth. 
the leadoff hitter in this inning, Finn, he fell behind two balls and no strikes with a fastball up, and the location has not been that great, and certainly wasn't with a curveball out over the plate there to Higgins. He gets the base hit, and for Mark Marquis, he's going to be watching Spencer very, very closely now, and see if he's not tiring, but up to this point, truly amazing job this young man has done. Rick, one of the keys has been the ability of Spencer to stop Steve Willis. Willis, the cleanup hitter for the Sun Devils. 0 for 3. And he has left three men in scoring position as the conference goes on. Out at the mound here in the eighth inning with Shitron continuing to warm up. Now, Shitron was used last night in that win over Cal State Fullerton, which advanced Stanford into this championship game. Both Stanford and Arizona State have had to come through the losing bracket. In fact, the Sun Devils lost their opener in the regional to Evansville one to nothing. Then they came through Oklahoma, UNLV, swept Pepperdine. And at the World Series after Wichita State beat them, they had to beat Florida and Wichita State twice to get into this title match. And for Stanford, it's been much the same way, the hard way. Spencer talking to himself just a little bit after pitching coach Dutton went back to the dugout. And here's where we have to be careful. If you go out and you ask a young man how he feels, the adrenaline level is so high, he'll tell you he feels extremely well. Attempted pick off the bluff. Looking for the runner to stray too far from first as he wheels around, which is a legal play. It's interesting the Bach rule has written that you're not supposed to deceive a runner. I don't know what that particular play is, but uh, some inconsistencies, I guess, in the rules from time to time. High pitch hit deep to left field. Way back. It's out of here. Steve Willis blasts a three-run home run for Arizona State. Tremendous home run, and that kind of signifies how frustrating it's been. You see Finn pleading with the ball to go out of the ballpark. Dan Rumsey, the right fielder, stepping in with Stanford's lead reduced to a five run margin, 9 4. And the pitch is inside for the ball. At the top of the show, we mentioned that. Jim Brock had said this ball club of his here in 88 does have the ability to come back and score runs late in the ball game, and Stanford is a ball club that knows that maybe all too well here. This one hit in the air over the second baseman's head for a single. Now it's Martin Peralta, the designated hitter, due up, and Marquis will have to think about making a change. It's the pitch that he can handle, and that ball is on the inner part of the plate. Bites it off, but Rumsey just lays it in the perfect spot just over the second base, and they've seen just about enough. So Steve Shiftron will be coming in from the Stanford bullpen here in the eighth inning. It's 9-4 Stanford ahead with Arizona State rallying. Superior protection. Introducing new world class Haviland Superior Grade. When you rev high and run hot, or when you crawl inch by inch, you need performance proven Haviland Superior Grade. It keeps your engine cleaner and delivers superior heat stress protection. New Haviland Superior Grade. Cool under fire. Stop. 
And what makes you think we won't end up like last year? What happened last year? We ordered new computers when the loans department expanded, but it took us six months to develop their application software. For our use to work, we get to keep our software when we upgraded our computers. We used AT&T. AT&T. Why didn't you think of that? Sometimes the simplest ideas are the best ones. Introducing the Elite 50LX from Honda, the scooter that comes with a trunk. It'll hold dinner for four and a small orchestra. It's the perfect place for your helmet and jacket. In fact, there's so much room, you can take Frankenstein, King Kong, and Godzilla for a ride. The Honda Elite 50LX, the scooter that comes with a trunk. Steve Shiftrud on to pitch for the Stanford Cardinal here in the eighth inning as the Sun Devils explode for three runs. Coach Mark Marquis talked about his relief stopper. Chitron uh, gives me gray hairs, to be honest with you. And Chitron's the guy that uh, if there's nobody on base, he'll walk to just to make me nervous. I think that's what he really tries to do. He tries to drive me crazy. But he, he is our ace out of the bullpen. And he's, uh, I feel much more comfortable if there's two guys on base and I'm bringing them in. Then he won't walk one or two. He'll get them out. <laughs> well, he has one man on base here with Peralta due up. And we'll see how Shipman's control here is this afternoon. He was pretty impressive last night, I thought. But he has a man on base, and as Mark was saying, he drives him nuts when there's nobody on. But one of the top relievers in college baseball, leading the Pac-10 with nine saves, 10 overall here in 88. Now with a score 9-4 in the count, one ball and no strikes, will Brock make him throw a strike, Rick? Well, without question, Arizona State also knows that Chitron has driven Stanford nuts at times. He's been extremely effective, but line drive, double play. I was going to say you would like for him to throw strikes, but then again, when Chitron comes in with a man on base and you can get him to hit the ball hard at someone, well, it's good for one side of the field and for the other. Well, the frustration just continues to mount with time running out. That a big play in this championship game. It was 9-4, runner on at first. The ball was extremely well hit. Had it been another foot right or left, it would have gone on into the outfield for a base hit. He did not go around. Batter is Tim Spear. He tripled for the Sun Devils earlier, and he has flied out each of his last two at-bats. Get an idea of how hard Chitron is throwing. Over 90 miles an hour, and hit deep to center field. The goal goes back and makes a beautiful catch, crashing into the wall and holds on. Nice play by the Cardinals center fielder. Here it is, Rick. Just a tremendous swing. That's only part of a great play. McGraw out in center field. Well, one of the reasons that Stanford believes he's one of the best center fielders here in the College World Series. A gutsy play goes back, battles the wall, and holds on to the baseball. And he will be coming to bat in the bottom of the eighth inning. Stanford only three outs away from back-to-back -back championships. A few words on the performing arts. your breath. Dentine, the gum that bites you back. Sometimes even Pat Riley's stomach can lose its cool. That's when he reaches for Rolaids. Nothing works better for acid indigestion, so Pat's free to let his emotions really show. Not bad. Relief. You know how to spell it. 
hurts. Oh. It hurts. Can you American Express? My daughter and I just had an accident. Do you need a doctor? I think she's got a broken wrist. That was some trip. I'd like to keep this while you're away at school. Sure. I've got something for you. It's got my name on it. Just in case. Thank you. Someone who cares when you're far from home. Membership has its privileges. A lot of hard work goes into an event such as this. Let's go down to John Dockbury. John? Thank you, Brent. I'm with Dennis Pope, and he's the man responsible for all of this. And the response in Omaha, the enthusiasm is incredible, Dennis. Yet I understand there's been conversations about possibly moving the event from Omaha. Well, there has been some discussion about that, but I think the uh, most visible element of support has been the number of people here this year and the enthusiasm of the fans and so forth. And uh, that in itself indicates that uh, Omaha is a home of the College World Series, and we look forward to uh, continue our uh, cooperative effort with them. What is the position of the NCAA at this moment on keeping the series a moving up? Well, I don't think our position is what we have to do to keep it here. I think what we need to do now is look at well, what we can continue to do to improve the situation here in, a, in an effort, joint effort with the city of Omaha. And, and we're very positive and very pleased. It's, a, it's a, a civic pride that Omaha has in this event, and uh, uh, the NCAA is proud to be involved with it. Well, thank you, and congratulations. Back to you, Brent. All right, John, thank you. Eric DeGraw, the hitter, with a count of one ball and one strike. He's the junior from Anaheim who just made that superb catch in center field. And he showed exactly why Stanford went ahead and maybe made that switch early in the ball game to get the defense into the game with that big center field and that wind blowing out and certainly able to cash in on that strategy in the eighth inning. Base hit for DeGraw. Bottom of the eighth inning with Stanford leading Arizona State 9-4. Now it's the top of the order, Frank Carey, and you cannot overstate how important that line drive that Carey picked off to start that double play in the top of the inning might have been. Arizona State making its biggest move of the game. And he was right there in the middle of another double play as Ingram throws on over to first base and draws easily in. Nine runs on 12 hits for Stanford. That's the most they have made in any single game here in the College World Series. We talked about Arizona State coming here the hard way. Stanford lost its Northeast Regional opener to St. John's and then came back to beat Kentucky twice in a row. Then here at the World Series, they were beaten by Cal State Fullerton before rallying and knocking off the Titans last night in the semifinal. Back to a situation now where they are holding the runner at first base. DeGraw can run, and Stanford has already seen the explosiveness that Arizona State has. They would like to be able to pick up another run right here. Pitch out. And the conclusion of this championship game, we'll send you for the third round coverage of the Westchester Classic. Glance at the leaderboard. They are out on the course, so you'll be seeing them as they play the back nine one ball and one strike big lead he's going there's the pitch out spear throws through Can you see it? yes he said let me see it and then it was there made the tag so DeGraw out stealing strong throw by a spear there you see the pitch out DeGraw is off and running but watch the throw and the tag here we see coming out of the chute Real good mechanics and getting rid of the ball. Here we'll see the ball. He goes right into it. You heard the umpire say, let me see it to see if the ball's still in the glove. Two balls and two strikes. And the count now on Carey. One more at bat for Arizona State. Trailing it by five. Side three and two. Ingram, the third Arizona State pitcher, has been the most impressive. Hit foul. Japan couldn't make the catch. They got booed.
three two. Good breaking ball. Six strikeouts for Ingram. Mark being concerned about his somewhat tired arm. But he has been impressive coming out of the bullpen here this afternoon. Shortstop Troy Paulson takes one outside the low. Both his hits were singles. Liz Tatch. Cannot pick it out at first base on the bounce. It was not a good throw. And Paulson is on. Tough play for Willis at first base. So the ball into the dirt. Here you see he sets up pretty well on the ball. Did look in the glove as if maybe the ball was getting away. The low throw that Willis has in the glove and just can't climb up with it. Now watch. He'll look back into the glove to get a second pump on the ball. Gives a low throw over to Willis. He almost has a chance to get it. The ball just skirts away. Ed Sprague steps in. Pitch outside. Rick, I should mention that the uh, previous coverage of the College World Series and throughout this decade has really been handled so very well by ESPN. And I thought they did a great job. They were very helpful for us here the last couple of days. We're using many of the same cameramen here this afternoon with our crew. And uh, I'll tell you, they did a great job. It's Stanford nine, Arizona State four. It's two balls and no strikes with two out. This is Ed Sprague. He was the hero back in the first inning when he smashed the two run homer. He was also hit by a pitch. Hit in the hand in his last at bat by Ingram. They tried to work him high and tight. This ball out of way is hit over the first baseman's head and trouble down the right field line. It falls in and Paulson will go to third. The throw back across to the bluff throw. No one was covering both. So a pop single to right field by Sprague sends Paulson scampering to third here with two out. No play on the ball for Sprague. He goes with the ball pretty well. Hits it off the end of the bat. Kind of a dying quail down the line in right field, but very strong throw coming in from Rumsey to third base. So the air gave Stanford a life here. And that air by Liz Tetch, only their third of the College World Series and their first since the opening game. Paul Carey ready at the plate. Swings and misses on a good breaking ball. Well, even five is a tough number to come back from with only one at bat left. Arizona State. Not like to face a six or a seven here. No balls, two strikes. If you want to look ahead, it'll be the bottom of the order. Coming up for Arizona State in the ninth. It was blocked by Spear, but the runner on first break will move along to second. Spear showing just how good and agile he can be behind the plate. And here's the look the catcher gets. Breaking ball down in the dirt. He's got a shift over, which he does in just very good fashion. Able to block the ball, stop the run from scoring. Two two and two out. Catcher Doug Robbins is next.
two two. Series get going here in the city of Omaha. People come out, they support it, and they have a good time in watching some youngsters kind of move through life. Somehow they missed. Arizona State out of the inning without giving up a run. So they'll be coming to bat for their last at bat, trailing 9 4. Candelari, Barola, or a pinch hitter, will be the first two hitters, and then they'll move to the top of the lineup. Steve Shiffrin. He's been on base twice with a fielder's choice and a single to left field. Shitron relieved freshman Stan Spencer. Ricky Ball swung on and missed. Emotions at a time like this and this part of the ball game, Brent. You have a one side. Stanford is seeing the possibility of coming back and repeat, which they didn't know, quite frankly, if they were going to be able to do. And it's approaching even closer as we speak. There you see the reaction in their dugout. On the other side, the frustration of seeing the light dimming as they're watching. One out on that call third strike. And here's Mike Barola. And Shipman not wasting any time. Short. Paulson up with it. The throw across. And Stanford one out of way. Pat Listash, the hitter. Ball stayed up a little bit. Yeah. On the inside corner. Yeah. Line drive, base head, left field, and Arizona State stays alive. up to John Finn. Joe Assetti came here with Colgate back in the mid 50s. There's a strike. No balls, two strikes. He was down to his last strike twice earlier in the week. This time he's down by five.
Stanford has done it. They have captured back-to-back -back national championships. Stanford celebrates there in the infield. And we can take a look at that magic moment again. Here's the dugout. Anticipating, anticipating, and it's finally there. Shiprin comes out of the bullpen, only their second pitcher. He relieved freshman Stan Spencer. And as the catch is made on the pop fly, he hugs his catcher in celebration of another national championship for the Stanford Cardinal 9-4 over Arizona State. We'll be right back. 